Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got a lot of things to go over. First up, the head of the world's largest asset manager says Bitcoin can evolve into a global market asset. And this is a pretty great story because it goes over somebody who has over 7 trillion assets under management. Also, PayPal CEO Dan Schulman is getting even more bullish on digital assets where he states, digital currencies are going to come into the mainstream the time is now he's going to give you a time frame and what i think it's going to be because institutions and retail are here to stay on some mixed news coinbase is helping corporate companies diversify with crypto and they were the ones it is finally revealed that helped microstrategy accumulate 425 million dollars worth of bitcoin with only minimally raising the price so the question is asked if they can give this much support to institutions at the drop of a hat, why are retail investors waiting weeks and sometimes over a month for customer service? Also, we're going to do an update on the XRP Spark airdrop, which is coming on December 12th. And it looks like more exchanges and wallets are getting into the game. We'll give you all that information. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is December 2nd. It is uh, 8 o'clock a.m. Texas time. Uh, getting things done early. Thank God. So what do we got today? Well, a little bit of a tumble. And that's just uh, really how cryptocurrency digital assets go. I mean, you got you to gotta expect that uh, what goes up will inevitably come down. And it'll be kind of like a two steps forward, one step back, sometimes three steps forward and 10 steps back. You just, you just don't know. It's how it works. But Bitcoin is down 1.4 and uh, dropped below that 19K uh, region. So, hey, that is what it is. Uh, Ethereum also is dropping, but uh, Ethereum 2.0 did launch uh, without any hiccups that I have heard of. So I'm very bullish on Ethereum. Look, I don't know what's going to happen with Ethereum, but I think it's going to be a real big winner. I'm very, very bullish on Ethereum plus Cardano. One of those is going to be a big winner. And the other one is going to be a massive winner. I just don't know which one it is. XRP, watch out. 3.2% down. <laughs> Ah, XRP holders, what are you going to do? Uh, good for you guys. I mean, still, when I say good for you guys, I mean good for us. I am also an XRP holder. I haven't sold one XRP since 2017. You know why? I'm super stubborn. And that's just how it is. So uh, it's at 60 cents. Who knows? Might go up to a dollar. Might go to 30 cents. I don't know. Tether is uh, sitting at that market cap of 19 billion. And look at Litecoin making massive strides in that fifth spot. And of course, that I think is the PayPal effect. PayPal came out a couple weeks ago and said we're going to support Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And the reason they did it was because there was no issues as far as like what is a security, what's not a security. Well, Bitcoin and Ethereum pretty much got a pass and Bitcoin Cash kind of does too. And Litecoin, really, nothing has really been said about it. So they said, yeah, you're not a security. And then they went with those four. The next crypto that comes out on PayPal will have what I used to call the Coinbase effect and it will go to the moon. I'm waiting for that next coin. And when we go into the next article, actually the second article, we're gonna see how there's gonna be a lot that's gonna be released on PayPal. Bitcoin Cash is down, Chainlink's down. Looks like everything's down. I mean, uh, look, it was a heck of a run. Uh, but even if you just zoom out over like the last 30 days, everybody's up massively, uh, unless you <laughs> bought yesterday, which is what I did actually. I bought yesterday because I dollar cost average in. I think it'll be uh, good in the long run, but uh, we'll see. And then, whoo, Ave, one of my new buys is up 14%, 30% for the week. That, I think, is going to be the next decentralized finance project that's going to make huge strides. So like we always like to do, we want to see that's just in the US dollars. Let's see how it compares to going with Bitcoin. Now, what we're looking at is how you would have done if you would have invested into altcoins as opposed to just a Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's always going to be at zero. So uh, everything's down, I think. I think. Maybe not Aave, but Ethereum's down 0.8, XRP 2.2. So again, if you would have just invested in Bitcoin, you would have done better. Uh, with everything else, you would have gone, let's see, anything massive. Well, 1% for Monero. Monero was always up, actually. Monero looks like a pretty good buy. Tezos, NEM. NEM's always good. Filecoin, 1.1. Yep, Aave, 15%. So again, if you would have invested in Aave as opposed to Bitcoin, you would have been up massively. And 11% for Yearn. Wow, Yearn making uh, the big, huge gains. But uh, that project scares me. Synthetics, 8.1, 10.2 for Kusama. Wow. As you get down lower, you can see how you could make some huge. Zilliqa is the next project I will be taking a hard look at. Mostly because of what everybody tells me and also with Digital Dave. 
So let's see, 10% for Hedera Hashgraph, congratulations. 14% for Thor Chain, nice. Six for Lix, 1.3, 3.6, Nexo. There's something to be said about going down into the trenches as far as uh, going much farther than the top 100. Let's see, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, looks like you can make some huge gains over here. The question is, what are these projects? There's so many else out there. And even though it's good for today, I wonder what it'll be like in, I don't know, a week? two weeks, a month, only time will tell. Anyhow, that's what's going on. Let's get into today's top stories. So first up, this is a quick snippet, but it really does tell you where the market is going. Institutions are going to pull up the initial investors uh, and they're gonna bring a little bit more stability and cash flow into this market. And uh, there's no other uh, place but when we look at one of the biggest uh, asset managers on the planet, which is BlackRock. And this is their CEO. This is Larry Fink. And he said in an interview on Tuesday, there was a conversation with the uh, former Bank of England Governor Mark Carney at the Council on Foreign Relations. And Fink said this, that uh, Bitcoin had caught his attention as well as Wall Street. He states that uh, cryptocurrency could possibly evolve into a global market asset, offering a rare positive statement. So really what it is, if this would have happened in 2017, people would have lost their minds. They would have lost their minds because institutions weren't here. This is like commonplace. And I think these are the types of stories that we like to see and need to see to just to, to reiterate that we all made pretty much the right choice getting into this market because it's a, it was a quite of a bumpy ride for the last three years. But we saw where it could go. We believed in it. We may have, uh, you know, put dumped a bunch of money in or dollar cost average like myself. But, uh, you know, these are the days that we really relish. But really to take a look at what he said exactly, he states, these big giant moves every day. It's a thin market. Can it evolve into a global market? Possibly. And what he's really saying is all these different giant moves, we see these giant moves. It's whales can manipulate this market uh, till kingdom come because the market is so small. I mean, it's only $530 billion, which seems like a lot to the average person. But we take a look at the global economy. It's nothing. It's nothing at all. So when he talks about can it evolve into a global market? Possibly. This is just good news because it's on somebody's radar. And when you start hearing more things and more things and more things, all people are the exact same. They really don't get into it until they hear about it and do a lot more research. Even in sales, you have to see and hear about something seven to 10 times before you make a purchase. Uh, unless it's like something that you totally, you know, absolutely need. Like if you're bleeding out somewhere, you're going to definitely just say, give me that gauze badge. But if you're looking at some other type of asset, obviously you have to see a little bit more things a lot more times. So this is on one of the largest institution, financial institutions uh, radar. So that is good news. And this is on top, this is the CEO. Now the, the CIO, the chief investment officer, Rick Ryder, he uh, last month speculated that Bitcoin could take some of the shine off of gold, possibly one day rivaling you know, gold itself. And we had talked about this yesterday in yesterday's video where we took a look at some instances where people were selling their gold off to buy Bitcoin on top of Raul Powell, who said he got out of all of, uh, all of his gold ETFs and uh, put it all into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Also, Daniela over at uh, Stansberry Research, she said that she had reached out to people who were in the industry in the bullion markets and said that, yes, they'd seen a lot of people who were selling their gold to get into Bitcoin. Now, whether this is actual bullion or this is actual ETFs, I think it's mostly ETFs, uh, remains to be seen. But still, it still means that money is flowing out of one asset class into a better asset class. I mean, I shouldn't say better asset class, but you know what I mean. So that is what is going on with the institution side let's take a look what's going on into the other area which is paypal so this is dan shulman paypal ceo and he states digital currencies are going to come into the mainstream the time is now so before we get this article i would just say this if all the different cryptocurrencies that they're offering in paypal if it didn't start off with a huge bang he would not be saying these things. He would not be pushing the issue. It would be a non-starter because they're like, we're in the business of making money, not losing money. So if this doesn't really start off like fantastic, then we'll just kind of kick the can on the road and see what actually happens. But because there has been so much demand, because they are making so much, or they know they're going to make so much in the fees. Actually, right now you can buy cryptocurrencies for free uh, on PayPal, I think until the end of December. So that's an option if you're into that. Um, but What's, what they're seeing is that there's so much transactions being done 
and you can see it as, as far as like their, their partner who is Paxos. Paxos has their own separate exchange. We covered the story before and there was a huge spike in uh, the amount of crypto that was actually purchased on that exchange. So they're looking and going, wait, I think we just got a gold mine. I mean, forgive the speech, but that is what it is. So this is why I think this is huge, but I think it's going to get even bigger because right now, only US residents can purchase cryptocurrencies on PayPal, not globally. That's not gonna get rolled out until Q1 2021. So they were talking about pushing that way back when they first did this. They said, well, we'll dabble a little bit in US. Now it has gone such gangbusters are like, yeah, we're going to uh, accelerate that. We're going to do that as fast as possible. And as a matter of fact, even the U.S. residents weren't supposed to buy this much until next quarter. But it, it, they had so much demand. They said, hey, let's just open the floodgates. And here we are. So Dan states this, uh, as we thought about it, digital wallets are a natural complement to digital currencies. We've got over 360 million digital wallets or users. And we need to embrace cryptocurrencies. And he's right. I mean, he's they were the ones to really just kick off the whole online payment situation. And of course, there's no better uh, way to evolve into that than the actual cryptocurrencies, which are the native currency of the internet. So why wouldn't they embrace it? On top of that, of course, they're going to make a lot of money in all the different fees. So it's just a win-win. Now, there is one drawback to all of this. And we talked about this in the very first video, in the very first module over at danteachescrypto.com, which is a 100% free website for all the things you want to know about cryptocurrency digital assets. And in this video, we break everything down as to the problems with going through PayPal. Because you can go through PayPal, that's fine, but you will not be able to custody your digital assets. And for people who are uninitiated or don't really know, they're like, who cares? Uh, I'm just going to treat this as a stock and just buy as a paper stock and then I'll sell it when it when it goes, goes up. So why do I need to actually custody it? And we talk about all these things in this video. So this is like the main thing I wanted to get to to people because let's be honest, uh, there's a lot of financial illiteracy out there and they don't understand. I mean, I didn't really understand everything until I got into cryptocurrency. And I'm like, oh, that's the reason why it's so important to have decentralized blockchains, cryptocurrencies, digital assets. Now I get it. So Dan also states that uh, crypto will become an everyday payments tool and spoke of the facts that the global pandemic has accelerated a number of trends, including consumers abandoning cash. And actually, Kevin O'Leary uh, from Shark Tank was on Anthony Pompliano's show, and he talked about how his businesses, things have been accelerated so much by 36 months. He's got a lot of uh, retail shops. He says they have been closing down at, at an accelerated rate, and their consumer or business-to-consumer model has been accelerated by three years just because of the pandemic. So when these types of things are talking about, this really accelerated everything, and especially crypto assets. So moving down. This is what's interesting, and this is how I know things are going at an accelerated rate, and it's going to only pick up speed as time goes on. Because Dan says, parts of these things were on the roadmap, roadmap and parts were not. We were going to provide the capability for our customers to buy, sell, and hold cryptocurrencies inside the PayPal wallet because we had done market research and something like 54% of our base wanted that capability. What we hadn't had in our roadmap is the ability to use cryptocurrencies as a funding instrument to purchase at any of our 28 million merchants. We moved that up because once you buy crypto, you'll be able to use it both as an investment vehicle, but as a funding source to make other purchases. And this is huge because they didn't really have this on their radar, but then as they offer all these things, people are like, hey, I'd like this, I'd like this, I'd like this, and it just accelerates everything. So we're on a breakneck pace to uh, hit all-time highs, I believe. And this is what I like to see as far as like where we are now and where we're going. Because he states, look in the future, Shulman said he sees, or Dan says he sees digital currencies becoming mainstream. Mainstream. I think that if you can create a financial system, a new and modern technology that is faster, less expensive, more efficient, that's good for bringing more people in the system for inclusion to help drive down costs, to help drive financial health for so many people. Over the long run, I'm very bullish on digital currencies of all kinds. And this is the exact same thing I talk about with banks. I say banks need to evolve or else they will get blockbustered. This is going to happen because of companies like PayPal, because it's going to move over into Venmo.
though, because even Google is talking about creating a bank. And if Google creates a bank, guess what's on the next horizon? Crypto assets to be included into that. So don't you think that banks would be like, wait, we still are using the SWIFT system where it takes two to three days sometimes to transfer cash around the world, which is ridiculous. We also have all uh, ridiculous fees. People don't trust us. We're in a bunch of scandals. Why would people still want to use our typical bank when they can go someplace like this? That is the big question. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. This one gives me mixed feelings, and I'm going to tell you why uh, in a bit. So Coinbase is helping corporate companies diversify with crypto. So MicroStrategy, uh, if you've been, if you're not, if you're new to this this area, just know that MicroStrategy it is a data analytics firm located in California, and they purchased 425 million dollars worth of um, Bitcoin in August, I believe it was. And it's now worth like 650 million. So they look like geniuses. And the whole speculation was like, how do they buy so much Bitcoin without moving the price? Because if you buy 425 million in one shot, obviously it'll go to the moon, right? It'll, well, not moon, but it'll pretty go up pretty high. But it didn't move over this this whole time uh, or during, during that time. So what the heck happened? Well, now we know it was Coinbase. So Coinbase states in this little uh, blog post, we're excited to announce that Coinbase was selected as the primary execution partner for MicroStrategy's 425 million purchase of Bitcoin earlier this year. Using our advanced execution capabilities, leading crypto prime brokerage platform and OTC desk, we're able to buy a significant amount of Bitcoin on behalf of MicroStrategy and did so without moving the market. So great job for you guys. MicroStrategy chose Coinbase because of our market leading tools, include smart order routing and advanced algorithms, as well as our white glove sales and trading services. Our system takes a single large order and breaks into small pieces. They're executed across multiple trading venues. This type of smart order routing minimizes the trade's market impact and helps disguise the overall trade size. So where do I begin? So let me just say this. Um, I own businesses and I applaud any business that is looking to gain an edge and to use all the resources that is available to them legally to gain a strong foothold in a market or to reduce costs. Good for you. Happy for you. And I will not take anything from away from MicroStrategy. They are really one of the catalysts for other uh, businesses getting into this space. So congratulations. And Coinbase, I can't even blame them because they were presented with an opportunity to partner with a pretty big company and they took it and they executed uh, flawlessly. And I have no problem with, with either of those. I, I really don't. It's just that when I see other things going on in the background, when I see massive outages happening again and again and again, when I see a report like this where Coinbase reports more delays in processing withdrawals due to network congestion, when I hear about the stories about people who either direct message me on Twitter, or they put in the comment section about, hey, I'm having problems with Coinbase. I can't get anything. The, coin, the uh, customer service is awful. I've been waiting three to four weeks for a response. That's unacceptable. And just between us, no one's watching. No one's listening. It's okay. It's just me and you. I've talked to some CEOs of other organizations that are in the cryptocurrency space. And I will just say this, that they've all told me the same thing. Look, Coinbase has moved on. They are not here for retail. I don't know why you guys don't get it. Uh, they are here for institutions. And that's just the truth. So, I mean, obviously they didn't say it exactly like that. I'm just putting in my own little spice. But uh, that's really what's going on. So for retail investors, I just don't think that Coinbase, uh, there's a place for us. I think uh, if you're just coming in, sure. But I think there's probably better places to go. And then if you're stuck in New York and it's the only game in town, hey, it's the only game in town. But I'm just telling you that if you're outside of that, especially if you're outside of America, there's a lot better places to go. And that leads me to my last point, which is I'm not going to recommend anybody to use Coinbase or Coinbase Pro on the exchange and wallet fees. Uh, I can say that it could be a last resort if you have nothing else going on and like everything has you know totally collapsed. Sure, use Coinbase because it's the only game in town. But uh, this, you can find a link in every one of the description of every one of my videos, but there's some much better options. And one of those I personally like is Voyager. Voyager is great because there will be no exchange downtimes because they're a brokerage. They work with a plethora of different exchanges and uh, to get you, first of all, one of the best prices. Second of all, uh, is if one goes down, who cares? They got another 10 to work with. So 
Uh, that's why I use Voyager all the time. Now, just to be transparent, just so you know, all these are affiliate links up here. So if you want to sign up for Voyager, you get 25 for you, 25 for me. Uh, Celsius, 20 for you, 20 for me, and then off you go for all of them. And there's some that I just don't recommend, like eToro. Uh, I won't get into that. I just don't recommend them. I don't like them, and uh, I don't like what they're doing. So with Voyager also, uh, I think it's only like 40% or 60% of the cryptos you can take off of their, their app. And the other 40% are not able to be taken off. And that's a problem. And I've talked to Steve a couple of times about this. He's been on the show. He says they're working very diligently. And they did get uh, Cardano just a couple of weeks ago to be able to be taken off that platform. So you can buy Cardano and you can transfer it to any wallet that you want to. So um, there's better options. And uh, that's just where I stand right now. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So last up, this is just a quick Spark up up drape. Uh, there's going to be an airdrop of Spark. It looks to be pretty fantastic. And just so you know, Kraken put out a uh, tweet November 30th and said, Hey, here's something to put a Spark in your day. Kraken plans to support the Spark airdrop program. Stay tuned, which is kind of interesting because just a couple weeks ago, they put out a statement and said, We're not supporting that, so tough luck. <laughs> we're not doing anything. And it's amazing that they were able to do quite a turnaround time and uh, actually support it. So the question to me is Coinbase is not going to support that. So I wonder if they actually will get on it. But again, I, they're not here for retail. Also, Poloniex says the exact same thing. And just so you know, I want to leave the, read this statement. They say, we have decided to support the Spark airdrop for XRP holders on Poloniex. XRP holders do not have to do anything at this time. And it's the same thing for uh, Voyager. It's the same thing with Celsius. It's the same thing with uh, Unano Ledger. I think you have to do a, a step for that. Don't quote me. And then all different exchanges uh, like Poloniex, like Kraken. You don't have to do anything. Just leave it there and off you go. States, we will take a balanced snapshot of all Poloniex XRP holders on December 12th. And I would recommend you get all your XRP into those exchanges or those wallets by December 10th. Because you don't want to be screwing around and like, oh, I'm trading, doing this, this. Just don't miss out. Just keep it there for a couple of days. Are you that impatient? Come on. Spark tokens will be then distributed to XRP holders when the Flare network launches in 2021. So there's going to be a snapshot. You're not going to get squat until the next year. So just so you know. Also, even if you get the airdrops on those exchanges, it states we will subject Flare network to our listing process and we'll make an announcement at a future date, should we decide to list Spark on Poloniex. So even if you've got it there, you may be stuck there. And that's one of those problems. So maybe it might be a good idea to look at the Nano Ledger and how to uh, put it on there in custody at that way. Also, it's from man Anthony over at iTrust. iTrust, if you do not know, is only one of two companies that I work with. They have done paid promotions on this channel in the past, and I get, requests constantly to be on this channel and so far i've done two two crypto trader dot taxes i think everybody gotta do taxes that's just how it is and the second one is ira because i think everybody should have an ira some people disagree with me but that's okay that's just how i feel and how what i give to you these are crypto ira which is i trust so with the year coming to a close you only have so many days to really get into an ira to contribute the maximum amount or else you miss out i think next year will be a pretty big year for bitcoin and cryptocurrency so i highly recommend you just take a look at the video that i put out for iTrust. i'm going to link it at the very end of this video or you can find it in the description of one of my videos it looks just like this so if you got a 401k a 403b or a, a thrift savings plan or a tsp or any type of, of account that could be like a retirement account Account, you can roll it over just talk to those guys over there and what's cool about them is unlike coinbase they are going to support the flare token airdrop for xrp so if you hold xrp in your crypto ira with itrust they're going to support the spark airdrop how awesome is that all right so that's it for today so uh thanks for sticking with me to the very end i really appreciate it as a nice reminder friendly reminder that dan teaches crypto.com is up you can find the link in the description 100% free. It simplifies all the training that you want to know, uh, the different things about digital assets, cryptocurrencies, how to invest, how to do your own research, and different products that I, I believe in. So go ahead and check that out. And that is it for today. So again, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.